Hey Alpha fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today I'm going over the uh, pump we're experiencing in the market right now. I don't know if you guys are following the uh, charts, but there has been a sizable pump today. And this goes along with what I was mentioning about how I was seeing this kind of knot building up on the charts. And that we either have a pump up or a breakdown whenever we experience this type of knotting. And this was a very tight knot compared to some that we've seen in the past that have uh, led to pretty big moves. Uh, but this is just all bunched up, a lot of price action going on here in a very compact space, kind of like this, you know, kind of like this, kind of like this. And what happens is you just get these explosive pumps up or down, right? And we're starting to see that. Uh, we had in, I think it was just a half an hour, we had a huge move which uh, let's just go ahead and yeah, look at this, you know, Bitcoin moved, you know, which for Bitcoin, you know, 6%, right? In the last couple hours and uh, in the last one hour, it moved, uh, you know, quite a bit. So in this case, you know, yeah, like almost 4% in, uh, in just, well, really only in half an hour, 4% which is huge, you know, Bitcoin doesn't usually move like that unless it's doing something interesting. And so it's clearly doing something interesting right now. We're gonna be approaching a new level and we're gonna get a different type of setup. Of course, uh, I did comment before that uh, Bitcoin was on a uh, higher low watch here. I had hoped to see prices around 35,500, just to snag a good deal. But uh, if you saw these uh, blue lines, I don't know if you can see them on your screen, but uh, if you see this blue line right here and this blue line right here, these were actual zones that I had marked out in the prior video. Uh, I had them marked out before the prior video where I felt that these were probably going to be the lows. And so I would expect us to pump up there. I was just hoping that maybe we could uh, see a retest of this level. And of course, I was warning you know, we don't want to go under this level, 33. If we go under 33,000, the chart was going to get broken. I was really going to expect us to shoot down low. Uh, the biggest tolerance that I could have is around this uh, 35,000. And I was kind of hoping just to see uh, maybe around 35 to $36,000, just to snag some really good prices before what I expected to be a pop-up. And I'll show you what I was seeing on the charts here. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the five day, which uh, I was just on the half an hour, but let's go to the five day chart. On the five day, this is what I've been using to show you our uh, good old, you know, tar pit, right? where we, uh, we get stuck in the tar and then we sink to the bottom and drown, right? Well, let's just go ahead and double check where we are right now. As you can see, we got stuck here. We fought our way back up. We uh, you know started to drown again, and then we just stuck to the bottom. Yes, we're still on the bottom of that tar pit. And yes, exactly like I said, the bubbles are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually we're going to drown, right? So this is the premise that we're operating under, which is that you're kind of creating these air bubbles above your head. And, you know, if we don't get above this mid-level pretty soon, we're going to get these big air bubbles, which then just lead the price action down. And we're going to see those, that, those 20s, okay? the $20,000 Bitcoin, $25,000 Bitcoin, at least $30,000 Bitcoin. But if we can catch this pump above uh, approximately, uh, you know, midway up this, you know, where we have a chance to grab the surface again, then we're going to be looking for that 42 to 44K region. And then we're going to be looking for this, uh, you know, uh, 47 to $50,000 region to see if we can grab a hold there. And if we get rejected again, you know, most likely we're going down, right? You can see this. You make a noble attempt, but you get rejected again at the top of the surface, right? Which would be approximately 55,000, 56,000, depending how this uh, band turns. It looks like it's turning down slightly right now. So maybe approximately 55, $56,000, if we can even get all the way up there and we get turned down, maybe we're going to have that huge dump later on. 
However, if we can't get above that $42,000 area, probably we're going to see it sooner than later, okay? So, uh, again, uh, this, is, this doesn't tell you what timeline we're operating under um, if we are going to see those lower levels. And we'll come back to this later because I think, um, you know, I don't want to bias you towards, towards the downside. One thing that we have to be open-minded to is that Bitcoin can pull itself back up, you know, kind of just pull itself up back to the surface, even if we don't break the surface and we start to come back down, you know, just like we did here, we can, we can pull off one of these moves and then maybe we go down or something miraculous happens in the market. But the thing that the entire market is looking out for right now is the... Uh, the Biden executive order on crypto that should be coming up. So this might define what happens, whether we go up, right, or whether we go down, uh, depending upon the content of the Biden executive order, which is rumored to be coming out tomorrow. I don't know the exact time that it'll be coming out, but uh, anyway, we should be hearing about it this week. And one of the things that uh, is really concerning is that the uh, executive order is stating, I believe, that, um, and again, it's not finalized, that the U.S. should obey or at least should follow the principles that our allies have set for crypto, okay? So they're basically taking a very serious national security look at crypto, and one of the things that I'm concerned about is that Canada just made a major play on uh, crypto. And Canada is obviously very connected to the U.S. economy. We're highly vertically integrated with Canada. Canada does more trade with the, with the United States than it does with itself, right? Which is incredible. So Canada, the Canadian economy almost acts as if it's a part of the U.S. economy. Um, more so than even its own economy. And so when the U.S. Uh, says that we're going to, you know, um, in principle, we're going to follow the guidance that our allies have put out there for crypto, what I'm thinking is that the Canadian regulation that just came out uh, under Trudeau, that that might bias some of the American thinking. And of course, you know, uh, Trudeau and uh, the Canadian government have put some pretty severe limitations on, or at least uh, governmental capabilities on how they can track it, on how they can shut it down, those type of things. And the U.S. might start complying with some of that, or we might adopt similar policies. And so this might be a pump that ends up leading us to a downside if if the final version gets interpreted in a negative way. That may be the catalyst that pushes us over, you know, into the downside. And again, I don't want to, you know, be too bearish on that or anything, but uh, because we do have the chance to get a nice bounce here, it's just that, uh, you know, with the U.S. regulating that's not necessarily a good thing in the short run. It is a very good thing in the long run. And I want you guys to think about that. The entire world, the entire world is talking about crypto right now. It used to be just nerdy guys are talking about crypto, but now the entire world is talking about crypto. And so all of this run, all of these two previous runs right here, no one was talking about crypto. You know, it was just kind of like a geeky thing that people were using their stimulus checks for. And back here, this was just pretty obscure. And back here, it was like, like no one knew. Like almost, even, ner even a lot of nerds, they didn't really know about crypto. Okay. Or they heard about it, but it was like, yeah, that's just some weird, you know, weird thing. It's not. It's not even part of the uh, you know tech community really. It's just some obscure area of tech. Well, tech got on board, and now what we're seeing is the world is getting on board. And I I do believe that this is going to lead us into the next era of Bitcoin. And the question is, 
how are we going to navigate into that world, right? How are we going to navigate into that next world of uh, crypto? Because we really don't have um, we don't have much distance between us right now and dropping to hell. And so, are these conversations going to damage us in the short run and then just shoot us up? Or is it going to provide a platform of interest that keeps us highly stable? And uh, I want to just take a look at something that I'm kind of marking out here. When we look at, at the growth of Bitcoin, and you know, I've commented on the pa in the past how the e how we come back to touch our uh, EMAs, right? And so whenever we have, you know, our EMAs on, let me turn off uh, this other one. Whenever we have our EMAs on, on the weekly here, there we go, on the weekly. What we do is we come back down to the 200. And then the chart resets itself, right? Come back down to the 200, and then we re reset ourselves. We're like, we're ready to go for a run. It's like you filled up the gas tank, and now you have the rocket fuel to launch, right? And you can go to the moon after that. But right now, uh, you know, Bitcoin's looking pretty exhausted. And when I say Bitcoin, I mean crypto, because Bitcoin leads the market, right? It's the market leader. And so right now, we've used up all of our fuel on this move. You know, we had a little reserve in the gas tank, and then we, you know, got this secondary move. And now, do we really have enough uh, rocket fuel for another one? Well, this is, you know, this this really is a complex equation, and of course, there's a certain market cap limitation. As long as people are too afraid to come into crypto or, you know, because they're worried either the price is going to drop or they think it's related to criminals or that it's funding Russia or that, um, you know, any, anything like that, you know, people might be afraid to be associated with it or they think that it's going to lead to, you know, regulations that might get them audited, you know, all these type of things that can scare people away from it or have them investigated by the feds for their finances and they don't want that. Uh, you know, if if crypto opens up to regulation, it could be that scary tipping point that just dumps it down. If crypto is associated with what Russians are using to bypass international sanctions, it could be the tipping point that brings it down. If there's a recession, because all the governments in, in the entire world have been printing money, to fight the you know the COVID shutdowns, then we could enter a recession as these Federal Reserves all across the world try to fight inflation at the same time. It could cause a recession because that's literally what you know monetary tightening is doing. It like slows down the economy, and then we enter a recession, and that could have people have less expendable income to put into crypto, and so we could see like a smash down like here, right? Like any of that could happen. Like any one of those things could cause us to just tip over, you know, to just tip over and fall, right? And if we did that, you know, obviously we would touch these, uh, you know, these uh, 200 EMAs and then we might have a nice bounce and then we could continue on our way. But you also have to consider what if these things are kind of like a uh, net zero, right? What if there's so much talk about, you know, Bitcoin and crypto and all of this stuff in the news because the U S president is talking about crypto this week. The U S president is talking about crypto this week. You know, Russia is adopting crypto, right? Yeah, El Salvador, that was nice, but that was just the first domino to fall. Now we're seeing Ukraine and Russia and all these, you know, other places starting to, bring, you know, bring crypto online. And we have the U.S. president, we have the Canadian, you know, leaderships talking about uh, crypto. And it is becoming something that is just getting saturated into people's minds, especially after those Super Bowl ads here in the U.S. And 
could this be a dampening effect where instead of instead of crashing down, what if we just made you know more waves? What would that look like compared to this? And so when I was showing you all this stuff, what I was really trying to do was marking out a triangle that is something that it, it could look like perhaps what we're getting into, right? And let's say that we don't touch the bottom of this triangle, but we just keep going sideways. You know, regulation makes it very boring. We have a very boring market as people kind of nervously get into crypto. And there's ups and downs because people get scared and they get out, you know, when the price starts tipping over. But then they get back in when it starts getting good. And then you have kind of a moment of mass adoption. And you have these 200 EMAs catching up with the price action. Basically refueling the rocket, you know, refueling the uh, rocket somewhere around here, you know, in uh, 2023, perhaps early 2023. And maybe we can just skyrocket from there. And you can see we're usually, you know, uh, sorry, not we usually, but if we look at like the fibs of how this thing broke down the, pr the previous cycle, right? Well, we can consider that um, just a second. We can consider that this area right here is the top of the market, and that this was just a blow-off top, but this was the kind of rounded top, and that's very similar to this type of rounded area right here. Is similar right here on the on the this previous cycle. Except they had a blow-off top. We didn't have a blow-off top. They had a blow-off top. So if we had a blow-off top, we probably would have seen a hundred, hundred and twenty thousand dollar Bitcoin. That's what everybody wanted. And you know, the powers that be, the smart money, they just they took us to a rounded top instead. They said, nope. If you have a blow-off top, you also get the equivalent in a dip. But if we control the top, then maybe we save a little rocket fuel. Maybe we keep a little bit of fuel in the tank, right? And so we didn't go to the moon, but, you know, we went to the upper atmosphere. And so we don't have to refuel right now, right? The way that this one refueled, like starkly right there. But we do have to refuel a little bit. Just get a little bit, you know, just top it off. And then we can go for another run. And then if we top it off again, maybe we can go for another run. And if we top it off again, maybe we can go for another run. And then we're meeting up with the gas station, basically, right? This is a rocket fuel station is the 200 EMAs. And then we can go to outer space, try, try again, right? And it'll probably be another rounded top. It'll probably continue to be these gentle movements. If this is what the powers that be, the you know the billionaires, the you know the class of investors which are now controlling Bitcoin, which aren't the miners anymore, it's not the nerds, it's these really big billionaires with a lot of interest, right? With a lot of political and a lot of calculated financial interest in Bitcoin, which are playing the market. And, you know, if they decide to do this, then maybe that's how it's going to go. And so while we normally would have expected a drop down to this fib, you know, if, uh, if we accept the, the rounded top level, because I want to make a comparison to our current one, then we would have dropped to around 0.75, right? The 7.5, basically. And the 7.5 is at that 20,000 mark. You know, everyone's talking about 20, you know, 25, $20,000 Bitcoin. That would be approximately where we would drop to if we had a similar pattern, just ignoring the blow-off top, as uh, the previous cycle. But if we saved that rocket fuel, we don't have to reload as soon as, as we did back here. We could, you know, maybe the Corona dump taught them something. Maybe the Corona dump taught them that we could refuel over here. 
And so we could have a third wave. We could have a third cycle, possibly, which we don't, which we don't see over here. We don't see in the past. Usually we see a blow off top, some type of quick re reaction, and then a dump. All right, blow off top, quick reaction, some type of dump. Even happened during Corona. But we did start to create these waves after it. It's almost like it's almost like Corona taught these guys. To, to reserve some fuel. And you see this little rounded top here, rounded top here, kind of rounding here before it was cut off. And this is rounder than we've had in the past, which are usually pretty spiky. Right? They're usually pretty spiky. If you zoom in on these, because these are years, right? These are, it's not a small amount of time. Those are years. You can see that in the past, it got really spiky and crashed down really hard. But now we're kind of making these little waves. So I want you guys to be open-minded as we're as we're seeing this pump, uh, you know, live on my screen, that we could just uh, make another round of turn, and that it's not fate that we have to refuel the tank right now. We avoided it once, maybe we can avoid it again, and if we can avoid it again, then maybe we're just going to touch down, and maybe it could be. You know, maybe 30k could be the lowest, right? Or maybe later on we could break down and maybe I've got it wrong, right? But just to be open-minded to these things. And so as you're trading, you know, one of the things that you don't want to do is just to be biased to one way. And if we go back to the five day, again, I marked off those zones, right? And I told you I had marked them off in advance. You could go back to my previous videos and you could see them. And I said, look, you know, we're touching this zone again. Like we're bouncing off of my zone. We had a major refuel opportunity right here. And those uh, refuel opportunities don't come around too often. You know, 2022. Barely here in 2021, 2020, 2018, 2015, okay? So we haven't seen these levels in quite a while. And you can look at it on the weekly also. On the weekly, the thing about it is that we haven't broken above this moving average yet. So we did break this trend line which is good. I can get rid of that now. We broke that trend line and we started to curve back up. But what happened is we touched the EMA on this RSI. And look, we're right here. This is what I really want to show you. We're right there at this EMA. The white one is the EMA. The uh, RSI kind of represents the, uh, well, let's just say it represents the price action. Okay, just keep it simple. And so as the price action is making this type of movement and the intensity of its movement is changing in these ways, right, this oscillator, it's coming to meet the EMA. And what we're going to be looking for is if we get a rejection, right, or if we get some type of acceptance. If we get a rejection, we might drop down. So this is the this is a really critical moment and I'll show you how that would look. It looks like this, right? Pop up. Hit that uh, that white EMA, get rejected and then fall down hard. Like we're right there. We are right here. Okay? And then fall down. Let me mark this one off so that we can examine it. And see what happened exactly. So it was right here. So if we go to Bitcoin and we see, okay, we popped up like sort of what, like what we're doing right here uh, in our current time, right? We started to see this massive pump. And let's say that we get to the top of that pump, but then we got rejected by the EMA. What happened after that? 
Bitcoin started chopping and then it dropped to hell. So this is the define like this is the pattern that we're going to be looking for right now. Whether we can bust through that EMA, I mean, uh, bust through that EMA on the um, on the uh, RSI, and then if we can get on top of it, then we can do something like this and maybe curve up. Sorry, we, maybe we can do something like this and then curve up, right, and have another run. But if we get rejected by it, then we bounce down, we get kind of trapped under it, and we go to hell. Again, I'll show you what that looks like. You see? This was the previous blow off top. And then we fell all the way down. We had like a, a relief rally. And then we made another attempt to have, you know, some type of relief. We got rejected. Rejected, 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 got on top of it, thought we were going to have a run, but we fell right through it. We, like, we never held on top. We didn't catch this rope, right? And because we didn't catch the rope and we kept trying to grab the rope as we were falling down, we weren't ev ever able to catch it and we plummeted to hell, right? We had a pop. Rejected, rejected, tried to grab the rope. Almost had it, lost it, fell to hell because of Corona, right? You know, at the bottom of the canyon, wherever we fell, it, we, we found the rope again and climbed our way back up, had a blow off top, fell, rejected, 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 not even close. Tried to grab on top, we couldn't sit on top of it, we, we barely held it. You know, kind of swung ourselves up, but we fell through. We weren't able to land solid in December, right? Rejected, rejected, rejected. Are we going to reject right now? Like you're, you're watching this live. Are we going to reject right now? Or are we going to bust above and have a chance to grab that rope? Because right now we're not even holding the rope, right? We're not even, we're not even, we don't even have our hands around the rope. That lifeline isn't there. We're going to like dip to hell. If we don't grab that. But if we can grab it, we can kind of hang on it, you know, get a finger over it, get a couple fingers over it, and hopefully we don't lose our grip. In that case, it looks like something like this, where we climb back up. And we have a bull run. So we are right in that moment. And so don't get bored in this market. Right? Don't get bored in this market because some pretty exciting things are happening behind the scenes. And if the Biden uh, executive order comes out and it says, hey, we're just going to study crypto. You know, we're not we're not going to do anything to like limit you right now. We're just going to study crypto. And yeah, we're going to try to block anything that goes to Russia. Which makes sense, you know. The Soviet Union is being the enemy of the West right now, right? So we have this upward channel. And if we can get on top of it, let's say around this, uh, you know, forty-four, forty-five thousand dollars $45,000. If we can get on top of it and bounce up, keep going. Yeah. We want to see us to get maybe in that forty-two dollars to $44,000. Because we're just following a range. We're just following a range until we grab that rope. And if we can grab it, stand on top of this level, then we have a chance to keep pumping. But if we lose it and we just wick down and crash down, sort of like we had... Um, let me get rid of this stuff. See this? See this wick? That, that was brutal. Look at that. Look how brutal that was. And so this was the wedge that we're forming. I told you we're forming a wedge. So we we have this uh, channel, right? It's kind of like rectangle, but we got heavily rejected. That's why I call it a wedge because we got rejected so hard it just pummeled us down to the earth. Like it said, you want to escape this wedge? You want to come to the top of this channel? No. Get back down. Smack you down. Right? 
That could happen again. That could happen again on this candle. It could just smack us down. We have four days left in this week. This week could get just smacked down and we break to the downside. All right. It could happen. But today we're having a nice day. But it could happen. And what happened here? Very similar. Very similar. All right, you see that? Smack down, smack down. This one was interesting, though. It pumped us up. That was a good sign. This is actually the opposite of this. Of course, you had some of these more indecisive ones, right? But this was a good sign right here. This was a good sign. And this is a bad sign. So this one, you know, faked us out and then popped up. And this was kind of the clue. It pushed us back up. Is this one going to fake us out to the upside? And then push us down? Because this was this is a wick that pushes pushed us down into this little tiny square. This one pushed us up into this tiny square. This one pushed us down. Is the market gonna fake us out, pump us up, and then smash us down? I think the market's getting ready to do that. The market is getting ready to make a decision if they're gonna break this line. And we're all set up to be able to do it. And refuel down here while everyone sorts out the regulation, while everyone sorts out Russia, while everyone sorts out the Federal Reserve's decisions on interest rates. Just smash us down, refuel Bitcoin, right? Get refueled down here. And then have a and then have a bull run, you know, or at least you know work our way back up until we have a bull run, which could take time. It could take time. But if the Federal Reserve news is good, they say, hey, you know, we can't increase interest rates because there's a war going on and our allies are suffering. We all need to support each other. We need to pump more money into the economy. We need to support the war effort. So let's pump some more money. Let's go. Then this is going to take off. If the war with Russia ends, you know, and they say, hey, you know, uh, we reached a settlement, you know, all those sanctions. Uh, just kidding. Everyone start trading again. Let's go. This is just going to pump, <laughs> right? Stocks are going to fly. This thing's just going to pump. If, uh, you know, the executive order comes out and it says, hey, you know, we're just studying uh, crypto. You know, the U.S. government is interested in Bitcoin. Like, we like what we're seeing. Then uh, go ahead, you know, like, uh, go for it. You're going to have a moratorium on any, like, limitations for a year. And, you know, we're just going to observe for a little while, right? Then maybe it's going to go. Or some combination. But if it's bad news, the market is positioned right now to push us down. And if it's good news, you can see we're all we're all tightly wound, ready to explode and have another one of these runs. Right? Another one of these runs. If we get any good news. Like we're just we're just right there. We're just right there waiting in this wedge for all the news. Tightening, tightening until we get that confirmation. Either good or bad, right? Good or bad. Yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's not boring. It's exciting. You should be researching what you want to buy because, you know, when you have confirmation that we're going up, you're going to want to buy those projects. When you have confirmation that we're going down, you're going to want to buy buying those projects at the bottom, right? And there's just one extreme case that I'd like to talk about just to, um, you know, just to add a little bit of gravity to this, because just like we saw in COVID, we actually broke this refueling station. Like we dropped so hard, we actually got to, I believe it's the 300 or 400. 
which just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen on crypto, okay? Or, or on Bitcoin. It, there could be the case where we have a global recession. We do have some type of expanded war that the Federal Reserve has to increase interest rates because infla inf uh, inflation is so bad that and prices are rising so fast that they have to slow down the rise in the price of goods and so they you know so they stop the free money which makes money more scarce and if money is more scarce then it's worth more right which means that it stops inflation because inflation is when your money becomes worthless so the fed you know increasing rates to make money more scarce makes your money more valuable so that fights inflation but it makes the stock market suffer okay so if these things happen and also if if the executive order comes out and says you know you can't use crypto right these are what our enemies use and what terrorists use and you know we're going to audit people who are doing it and we're going to go back and see you know what you've been doing in crypto and you know if they just scare people to death then you know there's a chance that you know again the the fed is out of out of money to print right it's, they don't have anything left if we tip over and we get to these levels like it's possible we could go to these type of levels and people might not even be expecting it that we could get we could see prices like uh, 14,000 right something like that we could see like price points catching support over here 10 14,000 it's not happened before that we've broken down like that you know usually we don't go below the uh, all-time high of the previous cycle and so you could expect maybe 20 to 25,000 at worst but, you know, if the world really does go to hell, just understand that you could see a significant drop if the world goes to hell. However, I think we've been pretty good on this channel of meeting your expectations, putting your expectations somewhere realistic, and then also providing an optimistic outlook, which isn't trying to sell you anything, right? Like, I'm not trying to push you into any crypto. I'm not trying to make calls for you. I'm trying to get you to use your own brain. So use your own brain, position yourself. If you haven't yet positioned yourself, look, we're almost at 42,000. We were like, we were 38,000 just, just two hours ago, right? So, you know, we can pump very fast and you can miss the whole move. You can miss the whole move. Look how fast this pumped, right? This took one, two, three weeks. And it was over, right? Well, how much room do we really have here? We could see like one, two, three weeks and just the whole thing be over. And you're just like, wait, what happened? But by the same token, look, this only took two weeks to drop all the way to hell, right? We could see in the next two weeks a drop all the way down here. And you're also going to be wondering what the heck just happened? So it's time to make some plans and stick to your plan. And you may want to just keep some money in reserve. Like if you're going to buy in now because tomorrow you think the world looks bullish, you may just want to keep a part of your uh, portfolio in USDT or a little bit of it in cash, you know, in order to be able to buy more, right, in case we do fall down. And the case I would make for that is really on the monthly. You know I'm big into EMAs. I don't emphasize it as much as I probably should because I like to look at some weird stuff. But hey, uh, we're getting pretty serious here, so it's time to just uh, look at some of these realistic things. And one thing, the first thing that I notice is, hey, look, because of this pump that we're having today, this 20, it's actually probably the 21. I, I think I used the 21. Yep. I like the 9 and the 21. Can see my settings for my EMAs. I like the 9 and the 21 for the EMAs because the EMAs react a little bit faster on a shorter. I mean, they are weighted towards the more recent price action. 
whereas the regular MAs are weighted evenly. So like an EMA 200, it uses like 200 units, 200 candles, right? And it, it considers them all, it averages them all equally. But the EMAs, they weight the more recent price action, just a little bit heavier. And so I like them to be a little bit tighter. So I, I have uh, the spread just a little bit uh, further apart, but I have my uh, short EMA, the smallest one. Instead of 10, I use 9. And the slightly longer one, I use 21 instead of 20, just because they have a different interaction than the MA10 and the MA20. This is pretty standard. Right? And people also look at 50, 89, 200, those type of things. Some people look at the 55 and the 100, but this is pretty industry st industry standard stuff. This 9 and the 21, that's pretty specific to me. It gives me a little bit uh, faster glimpse. Right? I can still see the regular action with these uh, 10 and 20s on the MAs, which is what kind of the more uh, boring traders use. Right? The more... Uh, it's kind of like the more standard industry thing to use, you know, in stocks and all, or whatever. But uh, this one's a little bit more exciting, okay? So I'm just trying to get a little bit more of an edge here, and so I use that. 10 and 20 is more industry standard. And uh, you can see, like, uh, we pumped... And so you can already see this one is curling up a little bit more. We had this pump, and then we're like recovering it. We're starting to get to the top here. But if this starts curling down, like if we got crashed down, get to about 38, you know, well, let's just say we get to like 37 again, then what we're going to see is that this, uh, you know, 21 EMA is going to flatten out. It's going to do something like this. And this uh, 9 EMA is going to be curling down. So something like this. And the price action is going to be moving between them. So where is it going to go? Pop. It's going to pop down. All right. So it's going to be squeezed down. And then, you know on this monthly time frame, where would it be supported? Approximately 25,000. That's This is the next standardized support. And why does why was I talking about those numbers? Because the standardization matters. Because people trade off those standards. And so if everyone has a 50 on their, you know, on their screen, right, this is a 50, then they're going to be trading around the 50. It's, it's not only going to be psychological, it's going to be cultural for traders. And so 25,000 is going to be a big area. And then here's the MA, this little thin blue one. And that's around 20,000. Okay. And on the weekly, you know, these are just slightly different, right? But that's because weekly versus monthly, right? So the, the time frames changed. But still, you can see the weekly 200 is 25,000. And the weekly 200 MA is 20,000. This is EMA 200, and this is the 20, I mean the uh, MA 200. And we're being supported by the 89s right now, which I mentioned in the last episode. And whenever we get squeezed between the 50 and the 89 on these time frames, if we don't break out of it, what you see, we get squeezed under it, and then we start to pop down. And that's just to bring it all together. That's why our Gaussian channels looks, look like this on the five day. Looking ugly. Phew, we made it. Looking ugly. Uh-oh, we didn't make it. Uh-oh, not going to make it. Uh-oh, <laughs> we're going to fall overboard. And I told you, I want to see us break this $42,000 area. I want to see us break that $44,000 to $46,000 area. I want us to get above the center of this Gaussian channel on the five-day. I want to see us sitting on top of 47000 you know, 47500 So that we look like this 
over here. I want to look like this. Then I'm going to think we're going to be bouncing. But as long as we're under there, I think we're just going to be bumping our heads. Or worse, we're just going to be making bigger and bigger air bubbles until we drown to these levels. All right. Everyone pay attention to the news. Find out what's going on with that executive order this week. Probably tomorrow. That was your alpha for the day. Stay safe, guys, and uh, happy trading.